Are you curious about what yoga looks like off the mat or keen to hear how yogis all around the world live? This show will let you in on the secret that there's no such thing as a perfect yogi. Welcome to the Plant Powered Yoga Podcast. Please welcome your host, yoga teacher, coffee lover, vegan, and known as the Plant Powered Yogi, Jess Ivers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Plant Powered Yoga Podcast. I'm looking forward to sharing today's chat with you with Ulrike Reinhold, a yoga photographer, although from Bali in Indonesia. Ulrike and I met back in 2017, and she's just a delight to be around, whether that's when she's taking a photo or just having a chat. She's got such a beautiful energy about her and it was really lovely to reconnect with her during this chat so I'll let you take a listen to what we spoke about and I'll catch you on the other side. Welcome to today's podcast everyone we have a special guest all the way from Bali Ulrike Reinhold I know I'm probably butchering that name but (laughs) welcome to the podcast Ulrike. Thank you happy to be here. Now you're tuning in from beautiful Bali, which is probably a bit quieter than usual at the moment. Exactly. It's quite different from what it was like before. Mm. It's quite empty. So there is barely any tourists here. So it's a very, very different feel to it for sure. When I was in Bali, when I met you, it was when the Mount Agung had erupted and I remember they'd stopped a lot of flights coming in and Bali was very quiet then. This was in December, what, 2017? And it was very quiet then. So I can imagine it's even more quiet now. Yeah, exactly. And we recovered quite quickly after the eruption of Agong. And you're totally right. It was so quiet. And I remember for the remainder of 2017, uh, it was quite a different um, feel to the place here as well. But uh, January, people would um, come and travel again. And yeah. we were even thinking about, I was involved in the Bali Spirit Festival. We were even thinking about not uh, running the Bali Spirit Festival, you know. And in January, we decided, I was part of the team organizing, and we decided basically two and a half months before that uh, we would go ahead, maybe with a smaller program. But in the end, we were sold out, and it was one of the biggest festivals that has ever happened in 2018. So that was a really fast recovery for sure. Well, hopefully Bali can recover as much as quickly as possible after COVID. But um, yeah, is it still everything's quite locked down over there still at the moment? Yes, absolutely. So yoga studios are closed, uh, which is quite sad because I love to go to the yoga studios. I love to practice with others. And that just hasn't been the case. Some people do some private here and there. Mm-hmm. And of course, lots of teachers have taken their business on, online and yoga studios as well. So definitely. But we, I'm ready for changes. I think just like anybody out there. <laughs> so you're a yoga photographer living in Bali. I mean, doesn't get much more idyllic than that. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you started your photography way back when, when you were living in Austria or Canada? Exactly. Yeah. So I went to college in 2001 for a couple of years. It was actually already after a bit of a career I had in, in the hotel industry and I wanted to do something completely different. So I signed up for that college and in 2003, I went traveling to Indonesia. First, I was flying into uh, Jakarta and soon after I think just like a week after I found myself in Bali which was empty at this point Bali empty three times so the first time when I came here that was after the bomb there was a bomb attack oh. in 2000, 2002 yes um, two, two, 2003 when I came here it was completely empty and we would basically any any traveler you would see you would connect with you know it was just like a, a special thing when you met somebody who was uh, traveling and you would exchange uh, what you have um, done before where to go still in the old days traveling with the lonely planet no internet so really basically the old days and <laughs> and that's when I met my uh, future husband and that's when I uh, um, decided to go to Canada he's Canadian and when I was done with college in 2003 I decided to move to Canada so that's basically how it started 
and that's also where I discovered yoga. Yay! So, what? Where did you? Yeah, first discover yoga, and was it was it a yoga studio, or was it like how did it come into your life? You know, that was actually really quite funny because Canada was really really cold. I mean, we all know Canada can be so cold, but I had no idea how cold it can get. And I'm an outdoor person, and I love to run, and I love to ride my bicycle, and that's how I would uh, just um, try to stay in, in shape. At this point, after moving to Canada, when it got a little bit chilly, I think it was like October or something, the temperatures dropped. I decided to do something else because I couldn't ride my bicycle anymore. You know, I, I, I was just a cold, my nostrils would freeze. And I, I would go to the gym and that just was my place. Um, it was a very male driven and it just didn't, didn't work for me. I, I didn't find my happy place there. And then a friend of mine said that she has discovered Tuni Yoga. I should join her. It's a charity yoga. And I'm like, yoga, what are you talking about? Um, what are you guys doing? You know, I had no idea. And so I came along. At this point, my English was not that great. And I definitely didn't know expressions like, you know, hamstrings and a quadriceps and like all those anatomy expressions. So it was putting down my mat in, in the front, uh, right in front of the teacher. <laughs> and I basically <laughs> just mirrored what he was doing. And it made me feel great. And that was actually what he mentioned at the very beginning. He said, the only goal you guys should have or could have is to feel better after the class than you did before. And I was like, that's easy. <laughs> I can do that. I'm just going to sweat and repeat what he's doing or, you know, go with him, feel better afterwards. And that was the case. And then I got really addicted to yoga, like in a heartbeat. Ugh, story of our lives. I, I like to say that too, that I'm like, I feel like you never leave yoga feeling worse than what you felt when you came in. Like there's you. Exactly. But anyways, I was really lucky, I think. And um, I took it from there and signed up at the yoga studio. Yeah. Oh, so nice. I love hearing people's yoga stories. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I literally started to, to practice five days a week. I was just wow. dedicated to that practice. And at the beginning for the longest time, and I think I'm speaking for lots of, lots of people out there, it was, my focus was on the asanas to, mm -hmm. to have a deeper understanding for my body, what is going on, alignment, gaining knowledge, also learning, you know, what look up words and all of that. So I learned English with yoga or yoga with English. I, I don't know how to put it, but it was a full, full experience, you know, really, that really brought happiness to me. Yeah. And the other parts of yoga that came way later, like it is the case for many of us. No, that's so sweet. I, and I love that yoga helped you learn almost a new language as well. Um, exactly. <laughs> Totally. It's like and double whammy. In the meantime, even if I capture people who speak German like I do, sometimes I can't come up with the, the right expression and then I throw in the English expression just because they come more easily. When it comes to yoga, English is basically my first language. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, yoga I, is my language now. <laughs> right, right. Totally. <laughs> Yeah. So after you found yoga, you lived in Canada for a bit and then you moved to Bali. Well, we lived in Canada for five years mm -hmm. and I already started, I did a lot of photography there. I was assisted a whole ton and I can only, I know we're not talking about photography here, but I can only recommend that you learn the most by assisting. And, um, no, tell us about your, your photography because how did you eventually I guess combine your two loves but yeah how did you learn to take such amazing photos what are the secrets right well um the yoga studio approached me and asked me if I could take some pictures of the yoga teachers and I was like yeah that's great I would love that that's how it started and I was like this is this is amazing you know this is an abundance of shapes I get to capture it was early days way before Instagram started and mm. And um, I didn't really know where it would take me, but I just loved doing it. At this point, I was fully doing weddings and maternity photography. But I realized that actually my real passion is, is yoga because that's where I felt the most connection, you know. So that's, that's how it um, 
all happened. And then we moved to Bali and I had a baby at this point when we moved here, a newborn, and I took a little bit of a break. And if I had time, I would basically just practice, but not take that many pictures. And then two years later, things shifted a, a bunch. My back then husband and I were separated and I needed to start thinking about options, how to support myself. All I could come up with was um, doing what I love most, which is yoga photography. Which is so, so nice when, when you can combine started, something yeah. you love and something you're good at and then build that into your business. Exactly. And you know what? I mean, also what I really appreciate is that I get to work with people who I have a real connection with because we have the same love for yoga. So that's definitely something I share. And in the meantime, I wouldn't want to do weddings anymore because I'm divorced. You know, like, <laughs> that's not my genre anymore. And my <laughs> pictures, yes, absolutely. But uh, still to this day, I love to work with one person. And um, yoga is just really uh, the most fulfilling genre. So we, we met in 2017 when I was doing my yoga teacher training in Bali. Right. I'm still yet to get back there. And I feel like I was 2020, I was like, I'm coming back to Bali and then COVID happened. I'm like, ah, oh. so it'll be a little bit longer before I'm back again. But, but yes, we met when I was doing my yoga teacher training with Radiantly Alive, who you do some yoga photography uh, for or have done in the past. I booked in a session with you because I wanted to get some, I feel like it was a special time in my life. I was like, I want some good photos of me looking looking good in the barley rice fields and it was so much fun I had so much fun with you that afternoon doing it and right. yeah I remember it was a lot of fun because <laughs> <laughs> I was like I look I'm I don't shy away from being in front of a camera but it's also still really weird when you've got to do like poses for people and but what I liked about you was that because you so you're actually a yoga teacher yourself or you've trained to become a yoga I've teacher? I've done my, my uh, yoga teacher training in 2007. Yes, yeah. correct. That was before I got pregnant. It hate me yeah. a lot throughout my pregnancy and giving birth. It's, it's the best thing you can do is um, sign up for yoga teacher training because it's, even if you don't want to teach, like I never really taught, mm. but it really helps me to look out for the right alignment and those kinds of details mm. for sure. Yeah. And so that was what was nice is because doing a photo shoot with you, you could tell me where, <laughs> where I needed to do something or, you know, and obviously this is for a, for a perfect photo, so to speak. Um, doesn't mean it's right or wrong, but you were like, do this. Or like you knew what shapes would look really beautiful. And I just wonder how, how you find that. And like when you're looking at someone and looking at their body and how it moves, like how you figure out what shapes are going to look nice. And so mm. even some of the places that you go, like what's going to look beautiful. Like, you know, I have some shots of me, you took, uh, when we're in the rice fields and it's like, I'm doing like a tree shape and I'm like, like emerging from the, the rice fields. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, I mean, um, frankly, every, there is no real formula other than me really being curious about uh, every single person I work with and uh, getting a feel for everybody because, you know, not only that we have different personalities, we also have, um, we are open differently you know some people are really flexible in their upper body some people have very very flexible hamstrings which i don't you know i'm like a, a man doing yoga still after all <laughs> years and so for me to to get a real feel for the person i'm working with is the first big um important detail i i want to bring to the table you know mm. it's not like meet up and i I suggest it's uh, it's the meeting I have before, either in person or online, mm -hmm. and and then also getting an idea of of the purpose. You know, if somebody says uh, they want to do photography for yoga photography or photography that is a slight mix um, for the website and Instagram and maybe some promotion material. So it's always good for me to get an understanding um, what they actually need. That way allows me to, to um, approach the session in a different way. For example, somebody has just done a yoga teacher training in Bali and feels really beautiful and radiant and flexible and all of that. It's fantastic to take them to the rice fields. But if that person is planning on running a business in a 
city, let's say in New York City or um, somewhere in Europe where there's no palm trees, it makes very little sense to include those pictures on a website. If the person is teaching there, maybe even in a studio, you know, so you want to have a relationship between uh, the pictures and the, the purpose which is quite important. So I might go like, you know, if you really want the, the, the device fields and the palm trees and the tropical feel, let's do it, but not only. Let's also do something a little bit more reduced. So let's go somewhere um, to a place that is more grassy or has a bit of a feel that could be found somewhere in the Western world um, that might just work better. And then also with the framing, you know, and that, that gets a little bit technical. I oftentimes people, you know, there is a layout to each website and oftentimes there's a banner picture with some mm. writing on top. So I, I have to make sure to provide the material for that. And I want the web designer to be happy with the pictures yes. <laughs> and not the client. And of course the, the, the client of my client needs to be drawn into my client's business. So it's kind of the personal branding that comes into, into uh, the whole uh, project that is quite important to, to um, focus on as well. Hmm. So basically, um, I would leave negative space. Negative space is um, an area that is not filled with information. Okay. It can be a sky, it can be a blurred background. Oftentimes, it's basically just a subtle color that's, that where you can put writing on top or another picture, you know, that works for that very purpose. But I wouldn't want to do it a whole session with negative space yes. to the left or right, you know? <laughs> so basically uh, each session is, is looked at individually. That's quite important to me. Hmm. Yeah. And what you said before about having, say, if someone's coming, but yeah, they're going to be teaching in New York and yeah, sure. Right. It's great having all these beautiful photos. I actually didn't think of that, but you mentioned that to me. I think when we had our first session, because you were like, where are you going to be teaching yoga? And I was like, oh, probably back in Melbourne, in a city. Mm-hmm. And well, I was like, oh, I want all these shots of me in Bali. But then you found this new, you know, you knew Ubud much better than I did. And so we went to this beautiful, I can't kind of remember what it was. but art space. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's gone. Oh, really? Oh, that's oh, so freaky. Yeah, they kind of tore it down and then and then nature took over. It actually still looks pretty cool. Oh, okay. Um, cool. It doesn't look the same anymore. <laughs> yeah. But it like that little space you took me to, I was like, we're in the middle of Bali, but I feel like I'm in an, an laneway in Melbourne. Like you haven't, but then there was also little elements of Bali. Like there was some like overgrown things coming and I just, yeah. And I love that you actually came up with that, even though I was like, no, 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 I want this. But you were like, hey, actually, if you're going to be teaching in the city or you want to have something that doesn't look like, oh, look, here I am just teaching in a rice field. Uh (laughs) Exactly, exactly. But I completely get it that uh, we want to take home a memory and Bali has so much to offer in terms of nature. There's this gorgeous uh, waterfalls, you know, like when I post a waterfall on my Instagram in the old days, like now there are no, no people requiring <laughs> no people here. But in the old days, if I posted a picture of a waterfall and the yogi in front, I would get average four inquiries of people going like, I want to go to a waterfall because it's just beautiful, you yeah. know, and I totally get it. So waterfalls, rice fields, palm trees, all of that. It's um, even the volcano. It's, uh, mm. these, are, these are also memories we take home and that is very valid to include. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, what I think is good for you. It's also what you think you want to take true. home as a sweet little memory. Yeah, it is. And I definitely have some amazing memories of, of that from those beautiful photos you took. Right. Now you're, you're based in Ubud in Bali, correct? Right. Yes. Yes. In the, the yogi hub. I mean, the whole island of Bali is, is beautiful, but Ubud is definitely the, the yoga hub of Bali, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's kind of where it started. And also the Bali, Bali Spirit Festival um, was founded by um, Ubud-based couple they own the yoga barn it's made oh, wow. and yes. her husband uh, Kadeki Kunata and Rob Weber would do all the music part 
And yeah, I, I guess that we would really attract all those like-minded people who are into mm. yoga and hate food. And, and the great thing is that not only do we have those yoga studios, but also a lot of restaurants that would cater to those needs. You know, yeah. I really, it's... I feel so blessed. I see, I see the place growing. And when people go like, oh, Uber is not the same anymore. Like it was 15 years ago. And, and yes, of course, there are some aspects of the occasional traffic jam and it's a little longer to go from A to B. But on the other hand, if you plan well, it's packed with really good stuff, mm. really, really good stuff. Coffee shops and, and gluten-free, any dessert and ice cream that is dairy-free. <laughs> it's, it's heaven. It's actually... Definitely. It's funny because as a yoga teacher and as a vegan, like Ubud is, uh-huh. is the, the place to be, right? But um, I feel like I'm, I go against the grain of being a yoga teacher that wants to live in Bali because I'm, I have too fair skin and I'm, mosquitoes are very attracted to me. So it's probably in terms of like <laughs> me getting sunburned or getting malaria um, is, is high. <laughs> so that's why I don't want to live there. But, but yeah, it's so good. Like for all the food, I just remember like there was no need to have to cook my own food like the whole month of my teacher training because there was so many great restaurants around that all offered vegan food and like raw, like I just, I probably ate the healthiest of my life the whole time I was in Bali. Absolutely. And you can do cleanses at any time. Join a program series, Ayurveda programs here. Mm. And it's totally true. Um, just, just to uh, throw in a little comment, there hasn't been malaria in all those years I've been living here, 11 okay, well, years. So, um, <laughs> but there are mosquitoes. <laughs> There's lots of mosquitoes. Oh, I just yeah. remember uh, the first time I went to Indonesia was to Borneo in 2014. And right. oh my goodness, I... Like there I had to go, obviously make sure I had malaria shots and everything because I was going deep into the jungle. But um, I just, I got, I think I counted one day, I had 60 mosquito bites just on my legs and wow. they're just very attracted to me. And I just get so paranoid <laughs> of getting, um, getting eaten alive. Totally, so. totally. And the body reacts quite strongly once I had to, to take an antihistamine just because I was like, yeah. um, my body was bussy already was after the photo session and during the photo session I oftentimes don't notice because I'm so in my element but afterwards I'm like oh what's going on here <laughs> battling the elements but yeah Ubud is like, like yoga veganism all the all the good healthy things if you want to go and just like have a mental and physical detox Ubud right. is definitely the space definitely yes absolutely too and just also to unplug from home there is a place that is uh, called the silent retreat where, you know, there's the, the, the Vipassana, we yogis, we all have heard of that, uh, the, the, the silent meditation where you have to sit in silence for uh, many hours a day. And for me personally, it's, it's a little bit tough, you know, to yeah. just uh, <laughs> imagine, but um, doing something along those lines, which is not, 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 not doing that much on the computer, for example, or just unplugging from the, 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 the city if I lived in the city, that would be something that is very, very appealing because you, you get to eat healthy food and you can walk and you don't mm. have to sit in meditation. But there is no talking, which is a really nice little, little side aspect. There's lots and lots of things I learned on that first yoga teacher training, but one of the loveliest things was I remember in the mornings James would say after our class or before he'd say before you come to morning practice um, try not to say anything to anyone like if you see someone on the street just give them a wave or or just hold your hand over your mouth or you know to to let them know you're not talking and then he'd always say after practice make your first words mindful beautiful and I loved that and I think about that often because I think how many times do we you know, well, for me personally, like I sometimes can just start talking just for the sake of talking to fill a silence or, but then it's like, sometimes we don't need to talk. We can just be. And, and you've just said something really of big value because it's not necessary to fill space with words or mm. feel awkward about not saying anything. It can be perfectly fine. And that also brings me back to, to working with people a little bit more introverts because I'm, 
I think naturally I'm a very outgoing person and I've noticed years back that sometimes my personality could be a little bit overwhelming for some people. So I've really made a point, and this is something I love to do. I, I, <laughs> I've made a point of um, becoming more mindful about the person I'm working with. Mm. And sometimes it really requires to slow down, take longer breaks, you know, and, and yep. simply not say that much. And still at the same time, give the other person the feedback so she doesn't feel naked. I mean, naturally, we feel naked in front of the camera because it's just so unusual. And, you know, ask me, I'm the most awkward person in front of the camera. <laughs> um, but that whole that whole um, balance of tuning into the other person's vibe and personality and holding back sometimes while still being here and holding space that's something I've really been very intrigued by. So my photography is not just uh, location, beautiful, beautiful poses and light and retouch, mm -hmm. which I love so much as well, but also the, the a, a true authentic connection. Because I also, you know, I always go like, I want to go home and I want to feel like I have gotten something and given something and if that's very little in terms of information or words can be perfectly fine yeah you're not just capturing a photo you're capturing a personality and you're capturing someone's whole self right exactly, exactly. Yeah. and that's why i don't want to work with fashion and models uh, yeah. i just really want to work with with real people <laughs> yeah it's the yeah. most fulfilling question. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure you've taken some photos of some wonderful, you know, yogis over the years. How many, how many like yoga teachers do you reckon you've taken photos of over the years? Wow. That's a difficult question. <laughs> well, you know, I was, I was so lucky that I've been uh, able to work with the Body Speed Festival for 10 years in a row and the, I started as a volunteer. We were only three photographers and the other two left. They were Americans and I stayed and I was like, I, I just love it. May I please keep going? And I, really <laughs> that. Um, I don't know. I was just, I felt so blessed to be able to work um, with, with yogis and, and back in the old days when it all started, it was so exciting. And, and then everything grew and, uh, with that festival, I definitely met a lot of teachers and I was fortunate to, to capture a lot. Some of them even hired me. Others, you know, you have to beg to please be able to take some pictures. <laughs> it was interesting, you know. Not everybody is, is, is up for it, by the way. But yeah, definitely I've, I've uh, had the pleasure of capturing many. I, I can't put a number to it, but perhaps 50 I don't know yeah lots and lots though yeah yeah definitely now where's your favorite place apart from Ubud in Bali because you do get around the island to shoot some photos where else is your favorite place in Bali to shoot uh, the ocean I love the ocean and you know it took me a long time to figure it out and I still I'm still learning <laughs> <laughs> The ocean used to be a mystery or the beach, let's call it the beach because I don't go on a boat and I'm not like in the ocean. Sure. But, um, you know, I come from a landlocked country. I come from Austria. So I have big respect and I'm not a surfer. I'm not a diver or anything. I left the ocean as a power place, but um, I have very little idea about um, the current and, and what the waves do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So it was a it, it was a approach I started about two years ago to mm -hmm. really uh, take it on, and um, now I try to go to the ocean about twice a week, and once a week I I work in a photo session because I really, really like it. And there's some some simplicity about the ocean, and then it can also get a little bit complicated with the light, and you know you can't move the sun around. It's like you have <laughs> have a bit more freedom in the rice fields where you can just turn um, or in nature let's put it that way versus the ocean or, or the beach but definitely it has been something I've been intrigued by uh -huh. uh, some of your sunset photos that you've put up 
that I've seen are beautiful. So I'm glad you found the ocean and that the ocean found you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for saying that. I feel so lucky for being here for sure. Yeah. And you're, um, and well, like I'm very much anti, you know, like a perfect yoga pose, but if what's like, what are some of your favorite yoga shapes or poses that people make to take photos of? Mm. Cause I, mm. I know as well, like when I did my shoot with you, I think I like, and this is something I just have an insecurity about is, is not being able to do like inversions. And I think you even right. said to me, you were like, it's okay that you don't want to do that because sometimes like you put so much effort into a shape like that, that like your face right. gets all like red and puffy or like there's so much yeah. determination in your face that then it kind of ruins the photo in the end anyway. So I think right. we just decided to kind of keep it simple with a lot of my shapes and right. they turned out right. beautifully. Yeah. I, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great question I could talk about for, for a long time, but I'm going to try to, like you, you ask, just ask me like five questions. Yeah, I know, there's right. a lot of questions in one. <laughs> totally. So as much as we are all attracted to really advanced poses, like a really advanced dancer's pose or, you know, half moon bind, like this is gorgeous. Any, any heart opening, um, also a, um, a inversion, like a wheel or anything like that is, is really beautiful to look at. Um, but just because you're not there doesn't mean you don't you won't go home with with beautiful pictures. And to be perfectly honest with you, I really like to tone it down quite often, even with the advanced people, for different reasons. First of all, if I look at somebody's account or a yoga teacher's website, and I I'm about to decide if I'm going to sign up for for yoga classes or immersion or retreat or yoga teacher training to me it's 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 a given that that person is 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 advanced you know like most likely that person has a lot to offer and most likely also has a lot to offer in terms of asanas so it it, it doesn't have to be a show off approach and those yoga teachers um, who tone it down and who are able to show up as they are and they, are, they, they allow me to really capture their essence and be authentic in front of the camera, even a prayer, a, a reverse prayer, you know, like any, any simple, simple uh, twist can be so gorgeous. If the right intention, oftentimes the most beautiful pictures are the ones where the intention is there and you can feel it and that's why I love to have that connection and that's mm -hmm. why we tune into the vibe because just going like okay you know how about a twist here yeah yeah look over there no turn a little bit more and yeah great I mean that's not gonna give you a feel right yeah. <laughs> but to, to let the, the person in front of me uh, experience the soil under the butt which doesn't happen that often because usually we are on, on, on a yoga mat. You know, that's already, that gives you already a different vibe. So those pictures to me have more meaning. They have more essence than the ones who are just about in the asana. But that's, that's my take because I like a bit of a deeper story behind yoga photography. That sums it up beautifully i think and i love that that's your approach it's never about something that and you know, I, right and and if i may just add uh it's also it's also about the angle that can make a pose look even more beautiful for example um a spinal twist uh reclined and me coming from pretty much above mm. can be such an amazing angle or having blurred parts going a little bit down the artsy uh, direction where only the eyes are in focus and the rest of the body is already blurred. That can, that can bring something very, very interesting to a very simple pose. So those people who, who inquire and reach out to me and, and go like, I'm not that advanced. I'm not sure if I'm ready for a photo session. Everybody's ready for a photo session. As long as you're willing to, to show up as you are and willing to connect with me because that's, that's essential. Yeah. That's a lovely thing to almost wrap up on, but I will ask without giving away all of your trade secrets, what are some tips? So if someone came to you and yeah, he's like, I'm not comfortable in front of a camera or I don't know what to do. Like how, what are your tips for someone that might be wanting to inquire, you know, inquire about a photo shoot or wants to have some photos, but isn't super 
is, is feeling a bit insecure about themselves. Right, right. And I think that applies to most of us. Insecurity in front of the camera is something um, that we just really bring to the table most of the time. Um, I would say uh, a little bit of a warm up at home uh, to tune into the body, to, to come to the session, just already being in your body and um, positive thoughts always help for that little inside smile. Pictures don't have to be all smiley, but something positive is gonna give you that natural lift that will carry through and, and, and uh, show in the picture for sure. And don't take yourself too seriously. You know, falling out of a post doesn't matter. I sometimes even go with a momentum, you know, like big toe pose. That's just the momentum. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not always, um, you don't have to be a certain way to be beautiful. The way you are is already perfect and beautiful. And embodying that and reminding yourself with those affirmations is going to help throughout the yoga session. Well, I think that is a lovely way to end our chat. Just be yourself and you're perfect as you are. Oh, I'm just going to like have that on repeat. I'm just going to record that little part and just like have it as my alarm to wake up to every morning. Like <laughs> telling me I'm happy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Now, where can people find you? Uh, your website or social media? Yes, yes. So my name is not uh, the easiest to remember, but it is on my Instagram. It's Ulrike Reinhold, Ulrike Reinhold Photography on Instagram. And my website is a little bit easier to remember. It's urphotography.net. Beautiful. That's where you can find me. And there is also a direct uh, link to WhatsApp so people can start a chat with me, ask me any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. Right. We'll put the links to all of those in the show notes of the podcast as well. And we'll have this up on my website so that anyone can find you so that when Bali or when we're allowed to travel again and people can head into Bali that they can find you. And yes, I can highly recommend. It's Yeah, honestly, like I those photos, I'm like, oh, they're just... Like, it, like you said, they're a memory and I love that they're a memory from like a really special time in my life. So thank you for great. That's a really so special thing to, to give someone. So great. Come back. Let's do it again. Let's yes. create new pictures. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that kind of they're really important. Pleasure. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Ulrike. She, like I said earlier, is just such a beautiful energy and I hope that came across in this interview. And again, I'll talk about it until the cows come home, but this aspect of that there's no perfect yogi, but Ulrike can find almost the, the perfectness or what's perfect about each and every one of us with her photography. So it was so nice to speak with her again and catch up on what's been happening. And I'm looking forward to hopefully being back in Bali when the world does reopen again, hopefully very soon. Uh, if you'd like to connect with Ulrike, you can visit the show notes below and find the links to her website and her Instagram and check out some of her photos. But until next week, have a wonderful week, everyone. Stay safe out there and looking forward to sharing a movement practice with you in next week's episode. Thanks again for listening to the Plant Powered Yoga podcast. For more information, visit plantpoweredyoga.com or visit the show notes below. I'd love it if you could rate, review, or even share this podcast with a friend. Thanks so much for helping create a kinder world and see you next time.